standing with his singing in 48. begins on page 355 in your book of common prayer or in the bulletin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the highest <coughs> to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the 
sin of the world have mercy on us. You are seated at the hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and to do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Samuel. The king, David, ordered Joab and Abishai and Itai, saying, Deal gently for my sake with the young man Absalom. And all the people heard when the king gave orders to all the commanders concerning Absalom. So the army went out into the field against Israel, and the battle was fought in the forest of Ephraim. The men of Israel were defeated there by the servants of David, and the slaughter there was great on that day, 20,000 men. The battle spread over the face of all the country, and the forest claimed more victims that day than the sword. Absalom happened to meet the servants of David. Absalom was riding on his mule, and the mule went under the thick branches of a great oak. His head caught fast in the oak, and he was left hanging between heaven and earth, while the mule that was under him went on. And the ten young men, Joab's armor-bearers, surrounded Absalom and struck him and killed him. Then the Cushite came, and the Cushite said, Good tidings from my lord the king, for the Lord has vindicated you this day, delivering you from the power of all who rose up against you. The king said to the Cushite, is it well with the young man Absalom? The Cushite answered, May the enemies of my lord the king and all who rise up to you do you harm be like that young man. The king was deeply moved and went up to the chamber over the gate and wept. And as he went, he said, O oh, my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would I have died instead of you, O oh, Absalom, my son, my son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in reading Psalm 130 responsibly by the whole verse. <clears throat> Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let, Let your, your ears consider, consider well, well the voice of my, my supplication. supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him, in his word is my hope. My hope. More than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him there is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. <clears throat> A reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Putting away falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil. Thieves must, be, must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up 
as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with the seal for the day of redemption. Put away from all your bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice, and be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children, and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? And Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. 
and I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets. And they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that no one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread which I give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Throughout history, the history of the world, non-Christians have looked with disdain at Christians as they claim to feed on the flesh of Christ and to drink of his blood. And frankly, many consider the practice as, as pretty gross. Even today, I'm sure there are many who think the same. People who just don't understand, just don't know what's going on. So let's take a moment <clears throat> and place ourselves back into the ancient world. Let's go back 2,000 years. Better yet, let's go back to the beginning of recorded history and try to understand just what was meant by eating the flesh of our beloved Jesus. What would these words have meant to them? From the earliest of times, nations of people have always used certain liturgies and ceremonies to pass on customs and knowledge, and also to worship. Whatever it is they worship. Some worship the sun or the earth, others their kings and the queens, and, um, and, and the family and, and, and tribal meals were important times, and also they were ceremonial. They believe, and I think correctly, that those who eat their meals together become alike in many ways. It is at the table where family and tribal customs and knowledge and wisdom are passed on from one generation to another. And these families, or group meals, as a rule, had three basic ingredients. There was meat, and there was bread, and there was something alcoholic. These ingredients not only sustained physical life, but also represented a spirituality of life as well. Now let me explain. Meat, along with blood, strongly identified with life. <clears throat> the ancients often identified with the animal they would kill and eat. For example, if they were to eat meat of an antelope, uh, they thought that would make them fast. Whereas a, a meat from a bear might make them strong, give them strength. They believed you would receive into yourself the virtues or properties of the animal eaten. So when Jesus says that the bread which I shall give is my flesh, and then later say, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, the people in those days would accept those words to mean they would receive the virtues and properties of Jesus himself in this meal. And bread, the other ingredient, has always been considered a basic necessity for existence throughout history. In its finished form, it represents a natural food made from a product produced by the earth and, you know, grain or seed, which when combined with intelligence of people, uh, and the, uh, it produces this food, which has sustained life throughout history. It represented sharing and companionship and, uh, and it was a sign of sacrifice and fellowship. And in Christ, in Christ, bread then becomes a symbol uh, for that which gives life to the world. Clearly, Jesus is talking about more than grinding grain and baking loaves when he tells his learners about the Father's true bread. Just as he is praying for more uh, than the food on the table when he in includes the petition 
give us this day our daily bread. Both the daily bread in the Lord's Prayer and true bread in the Gospel of John refer to nourishment for the whole life of a person, body, mind, spirit. Now describe himself as the bread of life then, Jesus is offering his life in his way, in his truth, as a model for human life in union with God and God's people. That, says Jesus, is the true bread which gives life to the world. Bread becomes a symbol then, a symbol which Jesus uses here and elsewhere in his teaching and ministry to hold before his followers the true meaning as God intends it. And the other ingredient, something alcoholic, usually wine. <clears throat> in the old world, this meant fellowship and communication and, and possibly overcoming of pain. Now, I know it's not politically correct to talk about alcoholic beverages from the pulpit. However, alcoholic beverages, wine in particular, have been an important part of daily meals, especially ceremonial meals, since the earliest days of mankind. Anyone who's spending time in France or, or had dinner in a French home know that they always have a bottle of wine on that table. And wine has certainly been part of our Eucharistic meal from when Jesus presided over the Last Supper uh, on to today. Scripture says, after supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Now the followers understood exactly the symbolism Jesus used. That the bread which they were ate was to Jesus his flesh, and the wine was to Jesus his blood. They knew flesh and blood represent the totality of life. By accepting this in faith and eating what he has provided, Jesus is saying that they and we could possess the virtues and properties of the giver we could possess the virtues and properties of Jesus. What they didn't understand, what they did not understand, was how Jesus had the power to make it so. The people who followed him for the feeding of the 5,000, which happened just before this lesson, uh, to this place where they were, were looking at the present. They wanted another miracle, they wanted another meal. They were in the here and now. They didn't understand when he said, this is the bread that comes out from heaven, that a man must eat of it and, and, and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven, and if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. They didn't understand. They just didn't get it. Flesh and blood throughout scriptures represent the totality of personhood. So Jesus' amazing offer is to give himself wholly to those who will receive it faithfully. In a sense, when we leave here this morning, each of us will have received Christ within us. We have reached out and touched him. Of course, theologically speaking, we realize that it's it is, it is not we who are able to reach out to him. Rather, it is God who reaches out to us. And in this sacrament, God comes to us spiritually and physically and touches us. And he says, I love you. Now certainly, when we come to the altar to celebrate Holy Eucharist, we experience the living Christ reaching out to us. Our greatest assurance of the covenant relationship with God is Jesus' real presence in the Eucharist. What more can we say? Surely it is in the, in the Eucharist that we encounter the risen Lord. There's no wonder the sacred meal moves us like it does. Truly he is the bread of life, for he alone touches and satisfies our deepest needs. In no other time do we come closer to touching him then will we eat of the bread and drink of the cup. With these words, Jesus introduces the mystery, the glory, and the power 
of the Holy Communion, the Eucharist. Here the great high priest of the world offers for the life of the world his very self. His body broken on the hardwood of the cross, his blood poured out to establish a new bond between our humanity and God. Here is the bread of life offered to us, the flesh and the blood of the incarnate word. Take, eat, this is my body. Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you. Thanks be to God and amen. Now to stand and affirm our faith with the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate for the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the whole world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to, the, to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Sandy, Jeff, Orny, Beth, Sandy, Zach, Evelyn, Kathy, Thomas, Glenn, Steve, Beverly, Jenny, Mary, Haywood, and Bill. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitudes of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins, O Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Would you please stand? The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please share that peace with one another. Peace to you. Peace, Mo. Peace, Douglas. You may see we have a few announcements here. They are on your bulletin on uh, page 11. And you know, uh, Father Daniel is in the Dominican Republic, can join himself. I saw on Facebook he was climbing a coconut tree. I uh, sort of wish I was there climbing it with him. There was a day I could. <laughs> uh, you notice that they, they used to volunteer for Sunday school. and. Uh, and I, I commend that to you because there's nothing more important to a church than at Sunday school, and, and we want to have a good one here. Uh, also, they uh, have a kickoff Sunday for school with a blessing of backpacks on the 12th of September, and then uh, a wine and cheese event for the ECW. Now, you need to put this all in your personal calendars so you don't forget them. And a, a confirmation in the newcomers class will start on the 19th of September with, the, with Daniel. One other thing I would tell you <clears throat> is that Wednesday we'll have our noon service and we're going to have a healing service and uh, we're using the liturgy from the book of occasional services. It's a beautiful liturgy for healing uh, and there's a time for you to pray either audibly or silent for anyone that you have concerns about that need, they need uh, Christ's healing grace. And um, a chance also to have uh, your hands laid on you for healing, but also um, to stand in for someone you know. You know, a lot of times that's the way it is. You, you have someone that's dear to your heart that, that needs prayers for healing. And, and you can stand in, and I refer you to the scripture where the four, uh, four friends of a person in need of healing uh, went to Jesus and they couldn't get in the room, so they went on the roof and broke it down and lowered, the, uh, lowered him into, in front of Jesus and Jesus healed him. It wasn't the person healed that had the faith, it was those four people, his friends. Sometimes it takes a friend to ask for healing. So I invite you to come Wednesday for our healing service. And um, I, the Mission Churches, I've had it, we've always had these services frequently and it's, they've been very beneficial and we've seen some real miracles. So I do commend that to you. Are there any other announcements? Well, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God. Our offertory hymn is, uh, what is it? Hmm? 325. 335, okay. It's in your
count how many we have out there? Okay. sanitizer Thanksgiving begins on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, or in your bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. And therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Thank you, Jesus. And therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. And sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, consciency, and peace. And to the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, the, peace. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the 
Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace, give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus Christ give it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ give it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ give it everlasting life. You receive the wafer today only and no cup. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. Doug, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep you in everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep it everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Jane, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The 
body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ gave an everlasting life. Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. How many more we have out there? Four, five, six. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. The body of the Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Lord Jesus Christ, keep an everlasting life. Patent over there too. The patent. No, 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 no. The the, the bread tray. There you go. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Let us pray. <clears throat> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and with Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. And our recessional hymn is three. Oh yeah. Hymn three thirty nine on your bulletin. to the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. something wrong with it? 